We had in our area in New England and Rhode Island and southern Massachusetts, we had uh, 300 fanciers at one time. I don't know how many there are now, but uh, we had a good concentration, but not as close. Uh, we have the Unit 10 uh, area here that there's approximately 100 fanciers in uh, one square mile area. Uh, my uh, four neighbors around me, uh, uh, they're all pigeon fanciers, so in every yard there's almost a, a loft there. Fanciers here, uh, most of them uh, are non-working, they're retired, and uh, the people that come here to fly pigeons, most of the time, uh, 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 pigeons is a full-time job for them. Well, what makes it special is that uh, you have probably the highest concentration of pigeon fanciers in a very small area than ever existed in, in one area. Many years ago, when we had more fanciers than we do now, uh, there were a lot of great centers like the Pittsburgh Center and Detroit and many good areas. But Spring Hill is different. The weather is sensational. When I grew up in the New England area, Morris Gordon was a mentor and one that I appreciated, and he was very kind to me, and uh, I one of the best breeders I ever owned, Morris Gordon, gave me. He was uh, one of the best. And there are many, many outstanding fanciers in the United States. Uh, through the years, uh, many outstanding fanciers. You've had uh, uh, in Florida, you've got fellows like uh, Randall Berkey and, and Art Hees and uh, through the years, many fanciers like Hank Bernazer in, in uh, California, Eddie uh, uh, Lorenz, uh, outstanding fan. There are many good fanciers through the years. Uh, I helped organize uh, that a group of fellows that uh, we went to a lodge in uh, southern Rhode Island for three days every season after the young bird season ended and it was owned by Charles F. Watkins. And I mean, Mr. Watkins wanted me to organize the New England Open 600 mile race. Yes. And with that, uh, I helped organize it. And it began in 1970. And in 1970, we, it's still in operation now with, uh, with a, uh, a 15 bird limit, we used to ship almost every year 5,000 birds and 500 lofts. The highest point we had was we had 570 lofts and 5,700 birds one year. That is with a 15 bird limit. Plus the fact that we had a, a mileage uh, thing that you had to fly 550 plus miles to qualify for it. And we could have picked up maybe another 200 lofts had we lessened the mileage. But in order to make it a legitimate 600 mile race, we made it with a, a mileage distance of 550 to qualify. But that was the beginning of it, and that began in 1970. And it's still going now. Of course, the, the lofts have diminished, and the pigeon population has diminished since that time. That was an old one. Okay. It was a very competitive area, especially distance area. Okay. Many times, uh, our birdage and lofts increased when it got to the 600 miles. Everybody was preparing for it and waiting for it. Yeah. And uh, like I say, we flew one time 570 lofts and 5,700 birds. That is. 15 bird limit and that's not easy to do but it was a great race can may I ask what are the biggest differences between racing pigeons uh, in the United States and Belgium specifically liberations training just the whole race system well the program is different in one way and that we fly 
at uh, young birds and old birds at different times of the year. In Belgium there and in Europe, many times they're flying young birds at the same time as the old bird season's being flown. The old bird season normally ends a distance race as Perpignan International finishes the first week in August and they uh, still flying young birds at that time and they begin with the young bird series about the second week of uh, May and so during May and June while they're flying old birds they fly a young bird series at the same time. Most of the important races begin in August, uh, late July and August, uh, the provincials and national races and young birds. So they're flying at the same time old birds and young birds. It's a very difficult thing. Most of the pigeon flyers in Belgium and in Europe uh, 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 professionals. In Belgium, you have a lot of professional flyers that fly different distances. You have young bird specialists, you have old bird specialists that fly sprint races, and you have the international races which are made up of the countries of Germany and, and Holland and, and England and France and Belgium. Uh, and those races, uh, there, there's people that just concentrate on those races. They're long distance races. And there's a difference. Uh, they're, they're, they specialize in certain areas of racing. And, uh, but the competition level is very good. And uh, a good fancier in England or uh, America or any, anywhere else, he's a good fancier. Okay. It doesn't mean that one is better than the other, mm -hmm. but there are more professional offs in Belgium than anywhere else that I know in the world. Okay. So the American racing pigeon fancier, who is a competitor here, uh, can be a competitor anywhere if he... Uh yes, a good fancier is a good fancier. And uh, <clears throat> if he's in an area where there are only a few offs and nobody knows that he's a good fancier, and, uh, of course, you have to be in the big ballpark to get the publicity and the uh, uh, the notoriety that people get from accomplishing what they do. But a good fancy is a good fancy. I've had many great pigeons in my life. I've had pigeons for uh, over 80 years, and uh, uh, I had a pigeon <clears throat> that was a hand 1265 was a number. She may have been the best pigeon I ever owned. I've had a uh, few uh, Hall of Fame winners that won the AU Hall of Fame for me, and uh, I've had a lot of great pigeons. I had a pigeon 299 that was the high champion uh, point bird in the United States for a few years. Both his father and mother I imported from the Jensen brothers in the late 60s. <clears throat> the father of them was a half-brother to the Mercs. The father is of the Mercs, rather, and the, my uh, 299 came from the Dunker Stair, which was the, the father of the Mercs. So I had many good pigeons. I had many good friends in Belgium and uh, brought many good pigeons in for Are all 60, 70 years. Yes. Are all exceptional flyers exceptional breeders? Uh, all exceptional flying pigeons also go, uh, are they guaranteed to be exceptional breeders as well? No, not at all. There's many uh, pigeons that have flown well and don't breed well, but th that's happened with horses too. If yes. you take Whirl away, who won the Triple Crown in 1941, he was a failure at stud. If you take Citation, which I think was the best horse that I ever saw, Citation won the Triple Crown, I, he was the best horse I ever saw and he was a failure at stud. Both those horses won the triple crown and uh, both of them were failures in America. They were sold to Marcel Boussac in France uh, because they didn't cut the mustard uh, for Calumet Farms. And, but many, many good horses, good pigeons, uh, good dogs. Uh, it's an exceptional one that is a good breeder 
and uh, and a good flyer. Uh, some of the best breeders that ever bred uh, were good horses, but not the, the most exceptional race horses. Bowler being one was a good horse, and the son of Nashua, he was one of the top breeders of all time, and he was a good horse, but not a great horse. Do you think, um, like the like the big annual loft that we have here in Spring Hill, the GHC Classic, um, do you think these events um, in the future are going to keep growing? How do you see the future here? Well, we hope that it keeps growing. We hope that it keeps. Uh, uh, Spring Hill is a lovely place to, to, to be living. Uh, the weather's wonderful, and uh, the competition is, uh, I think, is as high as it can get in the United States. We hope that the sport continues, so continues, and survives. And, uh, what advice can you give to the next generation of us younger people to accomplish that? Well. Enjoy yourself, and uh, if you're not successful, don't be discouraged and quit. Exactly. Or be miserable. I know yeah. fans here that are not exactly the best racers, and they still enjoy the sport. Yeah, well, that's what you got to do. You better enjoy the sport. That's what it is. The sport and the, uh, for having fun. Uh, enjoy the camaraderie and enjoy... Uh, do it, do it with sportsmanship. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure to speak with you. My pleasure. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome, and it's always my pleasure. You keep up the good work. I will. Do. Thank you so much for everything you've done for the sport. Um, they consider you a living legend. Uh. And um, that's that hasn't been granted. It's been through hard work, dedication. And uh, you have the appreciation of everybody. That's why I'm very happy to have you here on my channel. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it.